A few days ago, I was watching the Major League Fishing Red Crest Championship on Lake Norman in North Carolina, and I noticed something very interesting. Almost every competitor across the board was throwing one main lure to catch their bass, and that is the wacky worm. And it did not seem to matter if the angler was fishing around boat docks, shallow grass, wood, or rocks, the wacky rig dominated that tournament. But what makes the wacky rig so good for catching bass? My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. Another giant, another giant. Look at that, y'all. I can't believe what I just caught. Yes! In my experience, there are four main reasons why the wacky worm is such an effective tool to catch bass, especially in the springtime, but of course all year long. But if you are relatively new to bass fishing and may have never thrown a wacky rigged stick bait like this, I will leave a video showing you how to set it up, how to rig it down in the video description. So pause this video right now if you are unaware of the wacky rig, but if you've thrown it, you know all about it. Let's talk about reason number one why I think it excels, and that is because it falls vertical. Now, falling vertically in the water column is not unique to the wacky worm. A lot of fishing lures, when they hit the water, they fall vertically, but quite a few don't. Quite a few spiral or spin or glide to the bottom. So with a wacky worm, it excels because wherever it hits the water, wherever it skips under cover, that is where it's falling directly to the bottom. This really helps the wacky worm to fall in the strike zone next to vertical cover and structure. So uh, the poles on boat docks and marinas, uh, sticks like trees and bushes, grass edges, rock drop-offs, all great places to target bass that are sitting next to, oftentimes directly next to vertical structure. And a lot of lures, you know, skipped, flipped, or casted into those areas will not fall directly in front of a bass's face like a wacky worm can. And that's why it excelled so well during the Red Crest Championship. One thing this does mean though, is that the wacky worm is not a good and effective technique for fishing fast, for covering water. It is a, a spot a location specific lure and so if you're trying to cover your entire pond your entire lake in a, in a short amount of time the wacky worm is not the tool for you this is what you throw when you know where the fish are you just want a tantalizing presentation in front of their face that can trick some of the biggest bass out there reason number two for the wacky rig success especially at red crest is because this lure falls vertically without much action vibration or presence it is a very finessey lure. Most lures in bass fishing are designed to have some kind of noise, vibration, or presence in the water. And that is great. Your spinnerbaits, vibrating jigs, topwaters, you know, big jigs, big worms, they have presence, they make noise, and that works. But there are other situations in which those types of lures do not work, in which the wacky worm does. I'm talking about cold front situations, you know, weather fronts moving in, clear water, and fish that are moving up or leaving their spawning areas that just aren't quite in a chasing mood, they're in a really finicky, odd, finessey mood, and they need a wacky rig to fall in their face in order to eat something before they move up to the bank to spawn. And when you have all three of those conditions together, the cold weather, the cold clear water, and pre-spawn or post-spawn conditions, the wacky worm is the best lure to take advantage of those situations. And nobody did so better during Red Crest than my buddy who I filmed for, Alton Jones Jr. For all five days of the tournament, he fished a wacky rig around boat docks targeting fish that were hanging underneath those docks, waiting for the water to get just right so they could move up to the bank to spawn. But Alton did not just fish the wacky rigged worm weightless as it comes. He also added a small nail weight to the fat section of the worm to make what's called a Nico rig. And that brings us to number three, reason number three why I like the wacky rig so much and why it catches so many bass. And that is because it has the ability to have a variable speed of fall. If you take your wacky rig and insert a small nail weight into the fat section of the worm, this will speed up the rate at which it falls, allowing you to fish it deeper and a little bit faster. Turning your wacky rig into a Nico rig is super helpful when fishing water deeper than five feet, especially underneath boat docks, because it takes a weightless wacky worm so long to fall to the bottom, and sometimes that's effective. Occasionally, underneath docks, the fish are going to be suspending, and so having a Nico rig will make the lure fall too fast past their face 
and sometimes they won't follow it down to the bottom and eat it. And so a weightless wacky worm actually can work around really, really deep cover. But I'm just telling you guys, the majority of the time in what I saw Alton Jr. doing to get second place on the planet is doing a little bit of a weight in the end of his worm to get that bait to fall a little bit faster and cover water a little bit quicker. Now, as my dad would say, a little dabble do you when it comes to the weight size. Most people I know do not throw nail weights in their, in their stick baits. Again, we're talking about relatively shallow fishing. They don't throw weights heavier than 16th ounce. And Alton, during this tournament, to fish docks anywhere from 5 to 12 feet of water was throwing a 32nd ounce nail weight and a tungsten one at that so it's very very small very non-intrusive the fish can't even tell it's there and you don't even have to change the way the worm is rigged because a little bit of weight in one side will just kind of make it droop a little bit but it won't look too wonky in the water it'll still have that nice falling action and the fourth reason why I think the wacky worm is so good to catch shallow spring bass is because it has a really good hookup ratio. During the first four days of that tournament, I followed Alton on the water and never once saw him lose a fish at the boat. There were a few times that he would set the hook and the fish just didn't seem to have the hook. It had just the worm and so he would not hook that fish. But when a fish came boatside, when he fought a fish, he never lost a single one. In my experience, when a bass inhales your wacky worm, and trust me, it's not hard for them to do, all it takes is a good, strong, smooth, upward sweep of the rod and you're gonna land those fish almost every single time. Now, an important component of the wacky or the Nico rig is your gear, your rod, real line and of course the hook and worm. When I fish a wacky or a Nico rig I'm using a five inch Strike King Ocho in some kind of watermelon or green pumpkin variation. I've got a seven foot medium power spinning rod, occasionally a bait caster but for the most part it's a spinning rod application. I've got a 2,000 or 3,000 size spinning reel, 15 pound Seaguar Smackdown braid to a 10 or 12 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon leader, whatever you got. Gold label, red label, basics, uh, Invisex, any fluorocarbon will work. You just want to make sure it has a good uh, abrasion resistance. That way when you're skipping underneath trees, underneath boat docks, and the fish, as they often do, gets you stuck up in there, you can kind of keep the pressure up and get those fish out. It is a finesse technique, and that's why I love throwing it on a spinning rod. And arguably the most important part of the Wacky or Nico rig is the hook that you use. And the hook that I know, because I travel on tour, a lot of the top professional anglers, whether they're sponsored or not, the one they rely on is the VMC Red Line Wacky or Nico Rig Hook. And the only two sizes of this red line hook that you're going to need for a wacky or Nico rig is a number one or a number two, with number two being a smaller sized hook, but it still works just fine for a five inch stick bait like the Ocho. And as always, I have my rod, reel, line, and baits, and the hook in this case, linked in the video description below. The more y'all can shop for your tackle at Tackle Warehouse using the links in my video description, it'll help this channel continue to grow. Now, one more thing I want to talk about with the wacky rig is whether or not you should use an O ring to save yourself some soft plastics because we know that these things can tear pretty easily. And to test that, I used a really unique system to see if a wacky O-ring or, as you'll see in this video up here, my secret technique would allow my wacky worms to last longer and catch more fish. So if you want to see the test that I did, quasi-scientific, I will leave that video up here in the corner. My name's Tyler and I'll see you guys over in that test.